Hello and welcome to the Sequential Bootstrap Lecture from Hudson and Teams. My name is Valeria Pervashin and today I'm going to be your speaker. I'm a quantitative researcher at Hudson and Teams as well as Master's in Quantitative Finance at the University of Warsaw. If you have any questions during this lecture or you're just curious about the matter, feel free to reach out to me as my social media handles are listed down below. During the course of this presentation, we're going to be talking about the need for bootstrapping, the issue of the overlapping outcomes, as well as the three solutions for labeled uniqueness. Most of the time, we're going to be talking about the sequential bootstrap and the idea behind it, as well as the mathematical definition of the procedure. We're also uh, going to show the empirical results comparison between the sequential bootstrap and regular bootstrap, as well as wrap everything up with the conclusion section. All the references to all the sources used for the creation of this presentation will be listed in the respective slide at the end of this presentation. Sequential Bootstrap is available as a ready-to-use function in the Melfi Lab package by Hudson and Teams. We encourage you to bring the power to your trading using a Melfi Lab as it is a collection of production-ready algorithms from the best journals and graduate-level textbooks, backed into a Python library that enables portfolio managers and traders who want to leverage the power of machine learning by providing reproducible, interpretable, and easy-to-use tools. Our lecture today is inspired by advances in financial machine learning by Professor De Prado, namely the fourth chapter. And Professor De Prado has helped to modernize finance for the past 20 years by advancing the adoption of financial machine learning and supercomputing. While talking about the machine learning, we can obviously not avoid the topic of bootstrap. So why the need for bootstrapping? One of the biggest constraints in quantitative finance is the insufficient amount of data. Bootstrapping allows to overcome these constraints by generating new samples from an already existing data set. And even under certain conditions, such as larger sample sizes, the sampling distribution will be approximately normal and the standard deviation of the distribution will even be equal to the standard error, which is greatly beneficial for us as researchers. But unfortunately, finance is not a plug and play subject as it relates to machine learning applications, to quote Professor De Prado. And amongst other issues, today we're gonna to be talking about the issue of overlapping outcomes as it's depicted in the middle of the slide. So assume the outcome yi is a certain to the feature xi, and it is a function of price bars that occurred over an interval, ti0 and ti1. The series of labels yi with i's uh, ranging from one to i capital denoting the overall number of items in the set are not individually independently distributed whenever there is an overlap between any two consecutive outcomes. Uh, for, it means that exists such i than ti1 greater than ti plus one zero. In our case, instead of ti plus one zero, we're going to be using tj0 of, uh, as our consecutive outcome. So what does it mean that yi and uh, yj is overlapping? It means that they are both depend are functions depending on the same Return, return that is based on this overlap section. And what's the simplest solution that comes to mind to solve this problem? That's correct, just to restrict the horizon. Forcibly state that ti1 should not be greater than tj0. But unfortunately, restricting the horizon is not a viable solution as it leads to coarse models with limited sample frequencies. And for example, for such labeling techniques as triple barrier method, we absolutely must allow for the TI1 to be greater than TJ0. And that brings back the problem of the overlapping outcomes. But for every problem, there is a solution. And here's our three solutions for label uniqueness. You may ask, what is the label uniqueness? Uh, first, to talk about uniqueness, we need to talk about the concurrency as they are the antithesis of each other. Two labels yi and yj are concurrent at the time t when both are a function of at least one common return. It means that they are overlapping based on the overlapping intervals. 
So it means that our yi and yj are not individually independently distributed based on what we learned in our previous slide. And during the bootstrapping process, incorrectly assuming the iid and the dark draws iid leads to oversampling, and it becomes increasingly likely that our in-back and out-of-back observation will be very similar and makes the whole process of bootstrapping redundant. So what can we do to fix this? The first approach would be just to drop overlapping outcomes even before performing the bootstrap, but that results in a great loss of information and is less than ideal. The second approach would be to utilize the average uniqueness to reduce the influence of outcomes that contain redundant information. However, the best is the third approach, is to perform a sequential bootstrap, where draws are made according to a change in probability controlling for redundancy. The idea behind the sequential bootstrap is to reduce the probability of drawing the observation with a highly overlapping outcome and we achieve this by updating the probabilities for drawing particular values for each new draw based on the uniqueness calculated using the sequence of previously made draws. Let's talk a bit in depth about the mathematical definition of this method. The biggest advantage of the sequential bootstrap is that overlaps and even repetition are still possible, but decreasingly likely. So we're keeping the most of our information inside and available for us. Let's start with the notation. I capital denotes the number of items in the initial set. Phi is the sequence of draws so far, and the UT uh, I is the uniqueness of drawing the item I at the time T. The procedure for a sequential bootstrap goes as follows. First, uh, an observation XI is drawn from a universe distribution with the original probability of drawing any value I denoted as delta I1 which is basically equals to a general probability in the uh, uniform distribution, basically one divided by the number of items in the initial set. Then to reduce the probability of drawing an observation XJ with a highly overlapping outcome, we calculate the uniqueness of drawing the item J at the time T during the second draw using the indicators that signify whether there exists uh, an overlap between uh, our uh, TJ and the previous interval. After that, we calculate the average uniqueness of the set UTJ over J's lifespan. And based on that, we're calculating the updated probabilities delta J2, which I'll later on scale to sum up to one to fit the properties of a probability. This process is repeated until uh, I capital draws have taken place, and this concludes the procedure for the sequential bootstrap. Seems pretty easy, huh? And does this easy solution give the, this magnificent results that we're going to be talking about, that we were talking about? Actually, yes. The empirical results comparison uh, made in Advances in Financial Machine Learning by Professor Di Prado shows the result of Monte Carlo experiment of 10 to the power of six iteration of comparison between the standard and sequential bootstrap. And it shows that statistically speaking, samples from the sequential bootstrap method have an expected uniqueness that exceeds that of a standard bootstrap method at any reasonable confidence level. Proving our point that the sequential bootstrap is far superior to the uh, regular bootstrap and indeed brings us better results in terms of uniqueness. So what's our conclusions? There's no perfect cookie cutter solution for the overlap problem in financial machine learning. However, sequential bootstrap allows to efficiently and reliably increase the uniqueness of the labels, providing a big improvement in the quality of the bootstrapping process. We highly encourage you to test it on by yourself and share with us your results. For more information, we also advise you to dig a bit deeper into the books of Professor De Prado, Advances in Financial Machine Learning, and Machine Learning for Asset Managers that we based our presentation on. I thank you for your attention. And for more information, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It was great to see you today. Bye-bye.